Rahim. Ati Allah, Ati Rasul ulul amri minkum and always a reminder for myself, an abdukul ajeezu da'eefu miskeenu zalim jahad and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah in this holy month Zul Hajj, the holy month of Hajj, the holy month of pilgrimage and the completion of 12 months of journeying in this ocean of Marifah in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah is a hidden treasure wanting to be known, will never be known. But wanting to be known means as much as we are approaching, as much as Allah is distant. So it's a life of continuously moving towards these oceans of reality and the immensity of its blessings. And within this holy month Allah granted the shahadat of Sayyidina Uthman the holy companion of Sayyidina Muhammad compiler of the Holy Qur'an which is an immense, immense station. And for those who want the light of Holy Qur'an, want the blessings of Holy Qur'an then must have a love for Sayyidina Uthman That that light enter into the heart, that that madad and support enter into the heart. And our life is to compile the Qur'an in every aspect of our life. Means we get knowledges and wisdoms and hikmah and isharat and, and signs and guidance but they're like beads on a tasbih. Everybody hears talks, everybody hears lectures, everybody watches YouTubes, why don't they put it together? Means that each of the holy companions they represent an immense secret and the completion is based on love. That you have to love all of them and they carry a secret for us to approach the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and one, one immense reality was the compilation of Holy Qur'an. That this task was ordained by Allah anciently upon the soul of Sayyidina Usman Not something they thought of at that time, it's predestined and… As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. written by Allah that the immensity of this soul would have the capacity and the knowledge of Holy Qur'an in which to understand that they were reciting it, maybe there would be differences. And what about those who would come from foreign lands and they weren't Arab? The task then was given for Sayyidina Uthman to put together, write the Qur'an and put tashkil which for awliya has an immense coding. The encryption of Qur'an is in the secrets of the tashkil. So what type of task for how many letters in Holy Qur'an? In Holy Qur'an that's 28 in just the alphabet, 6,666 6, verses but how many letters and e each has maybe or doesn't have a code because every time there's tashkil there's a code. Not only for our pronunciation so that we would be able to pronounce for those who were not Arab and it didn't come as a second nature 
But it was Allah's gift to the holy heart of Sayyidina Uthman that put the coating on. One day they'll understand but as they read these codes would dress the soul. I said before in other talks that you think you're reading Holy Qur'an but actually Qur'an is reading you like your phone. Your phone doesn't open until it sees your face. When these biometrics become more and more advanced only then we'll begin to understand the kingdom of Allah These technologies that are coming are signs of Allah's kingdom that we think these are things of convenience. And we thought we open the phone and then the phone has to say, no you know you're not the one who owns this phone. We won't give you your money, we won't give you access to your accounts, your books, your records, nothing. If that phone doesn't see your eyes and identify you, nothing gives to you. Allah giving in our hearts that, do you think you can read my book so simply just because you think you're clever or is this uncreated reality from Allah reading us? And as soon as it looks it identifies your level and your reality before it wants to reveal itself to the reader. Because Allah describes this Furqan and it doesn't really open Qur'an until it sees the Arabic messenger, right? Muhabbat al-Nabi It looks to the eyes and says, this one doesn't have love of Prophet we'll give to him or her Furqan. And that's why many pick up and read and say, oh this was a lot of like punishment and rules and this all I read from this was just rules, I don't know what you're talking about. Well because the Qur'an didn't see you as anything worth more than the rules. It looked to you and said, you deserve rules. It looked to you and said, no you deserve punishment and their eyes are drawn only to the verses of punishment, they become very fearful of the book. But if Holy Qur'an looks to your eyes and sees ishq and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad says, now I give to you the light of Qur'an and a light and a nur from the noon, noon wal qalam when Allah describing in Holy Qur'an that the last letter of that noon and then Allah gives that noon wal qalam that these realities and this nur will begin to dress your soul and it begin to bless your soul. And all of these tashkils and these dots and these wow and the wow is a symbol of love we've taught before. That on that huruf when we see a wow we say, ooh, but more than just the sound of ooh is that Allah says, in this huruf the angel that carries and is the qadam of this huruf in this letter and this kalam is sending you from the oceans of wadud and dresses you an encrypted message upon your soul. And when it has that thing that look like a W like a crown that this from the kingdom of Allah this is from the sultanate of the heavens and dressing you with the special tajalli dressing you with its realities and its lights. So it means that nothing in Allah's way is simple, that it's just simplistic that's the way it is. Everything must have infinite depth of reality and that's why Allah says, then ponder, make a life in which you ponder. Slow down, read things with a heart of meditation and contemplation so that its realities can begin to open for the servant. So we pray that Allah grant us from this love, these actions that we do, that we make a will in the name of Sayyidina Uthman give donations in the name of Sayyidina Uthman gather with the love and propagate that love, give food in that name of that love so that His holy nazar to be upon us. And that he asked Prophet that let us to open from the secrets of Qur'an within their heart. 
he sees the love and the ishq of Prophet and we ask that, Ya Rabbi grant us then our hearts to be custodians of this love and of this reality and to propagate these realities towards creation. And as a result of that love and that ishq the heart becomes a fountain that continuously flowing. Allah put this secret of this shahadat as a gift for the nation. Means every journey is not random. When people plan a long journey and a government plans a long journey from one destination to the next, you don't think the city the planning department sits that, you know this journey is going to be long, we should have stations along the way, rest stations where they can have water, relax, freshen up. It's planned, Allah's plans are more intricate that as they're going on their journey and they enter into these ways of marifa and they enter into this twelfth month, I want to put the secret of Sayyidina Usman Jami al Qur'an and Majeed in this month as a fountain and oasis for the believers that to dress them from this fountain of Qur'an, these fountains of light and we came to Surat al Yusuf. Those who came new to tariqah, they traveled 1 through 12, in which the Surat al Fatiha dressed them. Surat al Yusuf completed them. And that's why the story of tariqah is in Surat al Yusuf. Anyone who wants to know what is tariqah? And you know why is my life like this and why is my life like that? There's nothing new. Your life and your life story and your testing and your situation, it's not new. You're not surprising anyone, read Surat Yusuf And Allah describing and we talked the week before, yes everyone going to be taken, everyone going to be thrown into a well. And in that well you're going to be sold, means surrender your will and this is the way of tariqah. And you're going to be tested and dunya going to come after you. If Allah sees that dunya is on front of you means you made a deal with dunya and you lost yourself. And if He sees that dunya came after you from the back and scratched you because why? The tariqah filled with blessings filled with blessings. When you come into the tariqah, come into the majlis, watch the majlis from your home, the fountains of kawthar because what is the last of the twelve veils? Kawthar. Twelve at the end by nine because this is a journey of the nines. So the last of the nine, nine times twelve is kawthar, 108. So the entry level is to Surat al-Yusuf to give you and give all of us, your life will be in Surat al-Yusuf. Don't be surprised, oh this happened to me Shaykh, that happened to me, yes it's all in Surat al-Yusuf. You got thrown in the well, we all got thrown in the well. But I, I didn't choose this, no Sayyidina Yusuf didn't either, he was taken and thrown and then sold. Then say. <laughs> Then sent into a palace and then dunya chased him. And when he realized there's so much barakah on this, I'm going to lose myself. If I try to go after these, this dunya and running after the barakah of this dunya because dunya now chasing you, following you, chasing you because he loves the light of the dhikr and the light and the love of Allah that all upon you. And what Sayyidina Yusuf said then? The first well he was thrown in but the second he asked for jail. When they started the dialogue of the dunya chasing him and inappropriate actions of dunya after him, he said, it's better Ya Rabbi that I go to jail. Means I should go into a khalwa, I have to learn how to isolate myself. There's so much blessings flowing in this way. If I lose myself in the blessings, I will have lost myself. So many come and go and they find themselves to be self-sufficient. 
Uh, exclamation point. Right? This is an important point. This is why the tariqah looked like a revolving door at a department store. Some guy's in, the next day he's out. Some guy in, the next day he's out. Why? Because they came, the blessing was so great, they thought the blessing was themselves. They go out, they pick up all these items and they think that these stores are giving these items because they like your face. And they think it's because of them they're getting these things. So no, they're getting it because the tariqah. Allah is sending it to the shaykhs. You're merely supposed to pick it up and bring it to the shaykh, not to take it. Means everything in our lives is a symbol of that reality, right? If the blessing comes and you find yourself to be, oh I'm self-sufficient, all these things open for me, I don't need you guys anymore, why have to sit here, why have to listen to the zikr on a weekly basis, then that's somebody who lost themselves. And that's when Sayyidina Yusuf is on because right here is very important when things are coming and everything's blessed they say, Sayyidina I don't need it anymore, thank you very much, I'm gone. Where are you going? And that's where we talk today, where are you going? Say, ah, it's okay I, I, I feel so great now, everything's fantastic. You know why it's fantastic? Because you joined shaitan's team. What was the description that Prophet had? Your deen has to be like a hot coal in your hand. You struggle, struggle, struggle yourself, I don't like this, I don't want to do this, I don't understand these testings. That's imtihan and that's what the tariqah was supposed to be, struggle, struggle, struggle. Then somebody emails that, I left you guys and I feel so good, well, of course you feel good. Because you joined shaitan's team, he's going to love you, he's going to have a banner for you, welcome ahlan wa sahlan, come to our team and he's not going to bother you another day but he's going to decimate and destroy you because you entered into his team. So the life wasn't about everything supposed to be great, it was about the struggle, the fight. At this point we'll open up into the danger of what's happening upon this earth. That when you think you, you just maybe well I'll walk away, I'll walk away from these blessings, I'll walk away from this understanding that there's a battle against the family. And we've said many years, many years that the black and white, the grey will vanish. Where people were believed, they don't believe, other people, well, I don't know what they believe. But there would day come where it's based on people belief and people don't believe. And the people who don't believe they're like loot. They say, look you don't follow what we say, we're going to kill you, we're going to come after you, we're going to beat you. Just like Qur'an because they were pounding on the door of the Prophet say, Bring them out. So what do you bring out? Bring out those people whom you have as visitors. Means the grey will vanish from this earth. So when shaitan wants somebody to lose their protection, our life is about staying under the umbrella of rahmah and mercy through good character, khuluqul azeem. Everything we do has to be based on good character. Even in your fight, when you're angry with somebody has to be good character. If with good character, I disagree with you, I love you, thank you very much, I'm going go my way. Every aspect has to be good character to keep us under this umbrella of protection. Our zikr, our amal, our actions, everything we do strengthens that umbrella, what does shaitan want from us? Get out of that umbrella. He's like the Lut people, get out. Because they were in the house under the protection of the Prophet, they said, send him out. 
our life. So don't think you're clever thinking you escaped. What is there to escape? There's no doors. So no, we're so great now, everything's fantastic. Yes, because you joined shaitan's side. He's not bothering anymore, he's not testing anymore, he's just going to devour and destroy you. Our life is to stay under the umbrella of protection and as soon as we run from that, that's all that shaitan wanted is leave that protection, leave that way, leave all those practices. And as a result they're hunting for people because there's no more grey. So you watch on the news, they actually have a movie now. What is it? The Sound of Freedom? Describing 450,000 children a year in America go missing. Go missing where? What are they doing to them? 80,000, 100,000, 200,000. How many think are going missing in Pakistan and in India and third world countries? What are they doing to them? Why? Because the grey is vanishing and that side now is advertising, no we want them. We're actually going to go into your schools and we're going to train on how to take them and we want them to be favourable to our system and our belief. So they're hunting families, they're hunting children, they're not hiding anymore. They're coming out and say, no, no, we follow Satan. And look at our clothes, we follow Satan, look at our actions and our demeanour, give us your children. They're not hiding it anymore, they're openly coming after families. So it means what? The grey is gone, your people will stand back and say, no, 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 we don't have anything to do with that system and that belief. And they take to their faith and the others will be completely opposite side. And in the hundreds of thousands they're abusing, destroying and horrific action. So where are you running to and who are you running to? You're leaving the protection of Allah because Allah protects those whom have good character. You think that you'll be protected when you backbite, curse and do all sorts of horrific actions? No, Allah you've left the rahmah of Allah If you leave the rahmah of Allah He says, I will test you and punish you by the hands of men whom have no mercy. And you're seeing now those men, they're making movies of these men. Who are these men? that 450,000 children go missing and they probably don't survive and you'll never find them again. And Allah describes in Qur'an, punished by the hands of those whom have no mercy means these are Hizb shaitans This is not a time in which people should be clever thinking they, they're running from Allah's protection that they're following the way of shaitan, that I don't have to do these things, and no you don't have to do anything. But no, they're hunting you and your family, they're hunting your children. And if you leave the rahmah of Allah it's open game on you. Means shaitan now can see you in his radar. When you're under the rahmah of Allah what Surah Yaseen says? That when Allah loves you, He puts a veil in front of and behind, they don't see you. The shaitans they don't see you. And they have now videos coming, they hunt people in the mall, they sit in teams and they look to see what woman and what child is attractive to them how they can sell them and manipulate and use them. And they sit and they hunt for them like predators. They follow them to their cars, they watch where they drive, they watch where they go home and then from home they begin to survey and see when they're going to come out and then hunt and grab and steal them. Means when you're outside of Allah's rahmah in these days of difficulty that are opening very fast, 
what happens? You're no longer under the protection of Surat Yaseen. They see you, they're looking for you, they're coming after you because you lose Allah's rahmah. And the quickest way to lose Allah's rahmah is judge your character. You're going around calling people, cursing a shaykh. Are you crazy? Could somebody imagine doing something like that? You think Allah loves you like that? Or what type of character people are doing? And, and you don't see what type of time we're living in and you think that Allah is, is okay with something like that? It's just shaitan fooling people, come out of that protection. As soon as you're out of that protection what happened? You came out onto the street, all his devils they see the person and they come after you and your family. This is a time in which to stay under Allah's rahmah by good character, good deeds, love. And we said the key was the love of Sayyidina Muhammad which is a respect and love for his family and his holy companions. And all that Prophet wanted, adabana rabbi fa ahsanu fi tahdeen. Allah sent me to perfect character. That's what Prophet is looking for us. When a zahiri, Prophet is looking, your qirat is wrong, I don't like you. You think it's petty like that? Or no, your character is beautiful. People bother you, you have good character. What's the best way to find good character in somebody? Bother them. Don't bother them, I don't, I'm not asking for anyone to bother me, we've got enough of that. But when you bother you can see the beatific character, it's called the lemon test. If I squeeze you, are you sweet or sour? Allah performs that test, He squeezes His servants. Most 99% come out sour, that's dangerous, that's very dangerous. Because in, in, you know have you ever seen these factories when they have something coming down, there's something that will pass and there's something that doesn't pass <laughs> and that goes into the other line. This is not a time to not pass, you want to pass the sweet test, okay they stay protected. This one's sour, put it into this category, there's something coming after them that will sweeten them. Because imtihan, difficulty, crushing, it sweetens everything in creation. But we're not asking for that. The shaykhs have, have, have given a system for us that make sure your people stay sweet, stay with good character have the best of character, best of love, that good character draws them near to Sayyidina Muhammad and under the intercession and the khirqah of Prophet With that khirqah can any shaitan see you? No, doesn't even attempt to look because it's the veil that Prophet puts. Otherwise how are awliya going to survive this craziness that are coming? where they're hunting down people, hunting their families. You watch the television? Watch it and see what kind of movies are coming out. How every single company and corporation has to promote a horrific system and a horrific ideology. Means they're hunting for families, they're hunting for children. This is a time in which to have the best of character. We pray that Allah grant us from these fountains of light and fountains of reality, the fountains of good character that save us from the immensity of, of difficulties that are no longer a talk of some day to come but actually day by day. You turn on the news and they're promoting completely different reality. Turn on the news and again another movie coming out. Turn on the news and they're showing movies now about how these things are happening. We pray that Allah protect us, our families, our loved ones and our community. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. 
Inshallah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.